That's democracy. Mr. Stevenson, in defeat on election night. Tonight, we are not Republicans and Democrats, but Americans. What unites us is deeper than what divides us. Is that true, Mr. Silver? Do you think that what unites us is deeper than what divides us? I do. No, 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 no. Not getting off that easy. Elaborate, please. Well, I think the idea of America, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, I think that idea brings us together and is stronger than anything that pulls us apart. Mr. Belinsky, anything to add? No. I was going to say that, what Alan said. <laughs> Quizzes up front, please. Chapter 11 for tomorrow. Mr. Gert, can I ask you a question about my grade? Sure. Am I going to get one? Don't worry, Mr. Belinsky. In my class, personality counts a lot. <laughs> Is everything all right, Mr. Silver? Oh, yeah, it's just a little personal problem, OK? Uh, girl trouble. How do you know? I always start with that. Nine times out of 10, I'm right. Would you like to talk about it? Well, see, there's this girl. You met her. I was with her at the social club dance. Kathleen. Right. Well, her family, especially her father, doesn't think she should be spending time with a Jewish boy. And if I had to be completely honest, my family, especially my grandmother, doesn't think I should be spending time with a Catholic girl. Hmm. What are you going to do about this? Why is it that teachers always answer a question with another question? Do we? You see, the crazy part is, is that I think if they met each other, they might actually like each other. Why can't they just do that? Me meet? The two families together? In the same room at the same time, like dinner or something? Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Thanks, Mr. Gray. You've been a big help. I have? Can't play, Nate. You have to meet somebody in a few minutes. Oh, who? K-A-T-I-E? Never mind. Don't worry. My lips are sealed. Very the second fellas hold the time. Nathaniel has to have his meal. Stop with the football. It's hockey, Grandma. Hi, Mrs. Burger. Hi, Mrs. Burger. Who is that girl Ellen is with, Nathaniel? Is that this Katie Monaghan? I'm not allowed to say. Oh. I can only give my name, rank, and serial number. Nathaniel Silver, fourth grade, and my teacher's name is Miss McCullough. All right, give me back that cookie, then. Yep, that's her. I did it. It worked. You're kidding. No, I told my father that the two families should get together, have a dinner somewhere. And? And I gave him that whole unite and divide speech, just like you said. And? And I told him that we are a melting pot of people where religious and cultural prejudices should not divide groups who would otherwise be friends. And he went for it? No, he hated that part. But once I mentioned, and one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, well, he nearly fell apart. Great. How about you? I didn't ask them yet. What? Well, I didn't think your parents would go for it, so I figured why well, put mine through all that pain. <laughs> Dinner with them? What is this joke you're making? No, it's not a joke. Hmm. Look, uh, Grandma, please, just listen to me. I, I thought it would be a good idea, that's all. I thought it might be fun. Fun? Whose idea was this? I don't know, my teachers, I guess. Your teachers. You're spending too much time in that school. Mom, can you help me out of here, please? I'm sorry, Alan. I'm just not sure that Grandma's not right. Not the Jewish or Catholic part. It's just that you're too young to have a girlfriend. Mom, there is plenty of time for that when you're older. 35, 40. Grandpa. Oh, Helen. <laughs> the forces of nature have lined up against you here, my boy. The river of history flows against your heart. 
The stormy clouds of cultural Grandpa, identity. what are you talking about? I have no idea. Where do they want to eat? Jules, we're not going. These people are not like us. We are different. Why are we talking about the differences? I mean, aren't we all Americans? Isn't this why you came over here on the boat? Six days, one nation under God with liberty and justice for all? Well. OK, Sophie, wait. I know what. This will make everybody happy. We go, but we don't have fun. Hmm. Odyssey enlightens and inspires every weekday. First, Ron Henry takes you on a biblical odyssey to discover life lessons. Then Robert G. Lee hosts the only game show with a faith lift. Inspiration, please. Weekdays, starting at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Odyssey. Every year, we open billions of cans the same old-fashioned way, cutting the lid, leaving razor-sharp edges that are as dangerous as any knife. Finally, there's a revolutionary new product that will change all that. Introducing Safety Can, the only can opener of its kind in the world. Safety Can actually penetrates the seal of the can, leaving edges that are completely smooth and totally safe. Safety Can's advanced technology actually produces 100 pounds of cutting power, penetrating the seal of the can at precisely the right place, at the exact angle. You're left with smooth, safe edges. It's amazing! Look, those old-fashioned can openers can leave metal filings in your food. Even the blade touches your food. That's unsanitary. And they drop the lid in the can. Yuck! But Safety Can's new technology glides through the seal of the can, leaving perfectly smooth edges. And look at this. When there's food left over, the lid pops back on, with the can and lid still intact. It's the most incredible kitchen product ever invented. Safety Can's ergonomic design is easy on the wrist. It does all the work, gliding around any shape or thickness of can. So which do you prefer? Those razor sharp edges left on the lid and can? Or those smooth safe edges with Safety Can? It's the world's safest opener. In fact, Safety Can is so revolutionary it was awarded this United States patent. It was even named Kitchenware Product of the Year. Get your Safety Can today. Available through this special offer for the incredible price of just $19.95. But wait, call now and get the safety jar absolutely free. Why struggle with stubborn jars? Now you can open any jar or bottle with ease. Safety Can and Safety Jar, both for just $19.95. Safety Can, for safety's sake, call now. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-569-8448. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $5.95 shipping to the address on your screen. Sorry, no CODs. Call 1-800-569-8448. Yet I can't believe this. We're gonna be late. We won't be late. Relax. The restaurant's a five-minute walk. Is that what you're wearing? No, I've got a bathing suit drying in the bathroom. I thought I'd wear that. That looks nice. I'm sorry. I'm just a little nervous, that's all. Everything will be fine. We've all been out to dinner before. We are skilled in the use of most utensils. We will not embarrass you. Okay, we are ready to do battle. Dad. I didn't mean it that way. We are ready to meet the enemy. No, no, no. We are ready to meet the Monahans. Oh, great. This night's going to be a lot of fun. Good night, honey. Thanks, Mom. Good luck, Alan. Don't worry. They're going to like you. I'm not sure this is getting you into the right mood for tonight. Well, it's good to remember who you are, Ellen, that's all. Where you come from. Listen. It's pretty. What's it mean? What does it mean? Beautiful village of my youth. Gone now forever. All that's left is ashes and dust. So. 
Let's go have fun. Okay, off to the war. Grandpa. Just joking. You look so nice, El. Wow, the beautiful boy. The nerve of those people not to want you. Grandma, please. Well, I should get ready. We should try to get there a little bit early. They'll probably want to have a drink first. Dad, I'm not sure this is getting you in the right mood for tonight. Oh, it's good to remember who you are, Kathleen Elizabeth, that's all. Where you come from. I come from Brooklyn. That's right. Okay, here we go. I think we're just about ready. Patrick, Connor, Matthew, Seamus, Andrew, we're going. All right, Mom. Come on, you guys. Come on. All right, he's going. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, you didn't. Have fun, you guys. Okay, off to the wars. Dad? Oh, I'm just joking. Still, we should get there early. Prices go up at 7. I'm sure they'll want to order before that. I'm going to stole Ireland. Hmm. Nobody told me. I'll take my word for it. So, uh, what are you studying in school, Alan? I'm in ninth grade, same as Kathleen, so I'm still pretty much taking the basic courses. He's an excellent student. I have his report card right here. Mom. Sorry. Would you like to look at Kathleen's? Mom. All A's. A in science. Katie, that's terrific. She's very good in science and math. She gets that from my side. My father was a chemistry professor at Trinity College in Dublin. Really? Why, you didn't think Irish people could be professors? You're a very sensitive guy, Patrick. Has anybody ever told you that? It takes forever, but it's all right. Hello, Tony. Good to see you. How are you? Oh, no. What? Uncle Willie and Aunt Miriam. Oh, no. Maybe they won't. Wait, look. I can't believe this is unbelievable. What are they doing here? This is incredible. Uncle this is incredible. Oh, my God. It's so amazing. Oh, my God. Beautiful. How are you? Are you Hi, Bill. Yeah. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Take out. My wife's mother, the Countess Berkowitz, oh. will only eat Chinese food from this restaurant. Never mind that we have to drive two hours to get here. She gets hungry. I have to get behind the wheel. So you make an old woman happy. So what? So it's expensive, that's oh. all. It takes a lot of gas to get us here. Oh. That's for openers. And Her Highness likes to eat everything on the left side of the menu. <laughs> Columns A through E, those are hers. Willie, Willie, we're... It's not that we can't afford it. I can afford it. Of course I can. I make a lot of money. I do, but I work hard for it. Willie, I think your package is ready. No, no. They'll call. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't met your friends. Hello. I'm Sophie's nephew, Willie Smith. Patrick Monahan. My wife, Rosemary, my daughter, Kathleen. Hello. Hi. Oh, this is my wife. Hi, Miriam Smith. Originally, it was Smolinski. My wife wanted to change it for business reasons. What's <laughs> the point of changing it if you're going to tell everyone? <laughs> Do I look like a Smith? I mean, we changed it so no one would know we were Jewish. You couldn't tell otherwise, right? Oh, don't worry, honey, we're fooling them. <laughs> Bet you thought we were Dutch, huh? <laughs> Why don't we let these people have their dinner, okay, darling? Oh, of course, sweetheart. <laughs> so, what's the occasion? Well, it's no occasion. The two children are friends, and we just thought it would be nice for the two families to get together. Oh, that's sweet. That's darling. Look, Miriam, is that a face? Is that a punum? <laughs> a punum. <laughs> Come, Willie. I want to show you something. What? The door. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Bye, it was, it was a pleasure meeting, call. everyone. Great to see you. Sophie, you look beautiful. So long. Oh, he's got a gun. He's got a gun, George. Did you know he has a gun? It's okay. He's a police detective. Oh, good. I'm nervous. It's okay. It's, you know, look, as long as I got you here, can I ask you a question? Of course. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, but what's considered a good bribe these days? What? Look, I got this guy I've been taking care of, and I want to do right by him. If you've been bribing a police officer, I suggest you stop immediately and never mention it to another soul. If you give me the officer's name, I'll look him up and have him shot. Oops. Smolensky, your order's ready. Smith. It's Smith. Oh, hey. Pleasure. We gotta uh, go. It's a pleasure, sir. You, you look great. Take care. Bye-bye. Sorry about that. 
he actually means well. He really has a very good heart. Yeah. It's just that, uh... Yeah, I know. Everyone thinks that all cops are on the take. It's something we live with. You read about that a lot, you know. Do you? I had a nephew who was a policeman. He retired. Eddie Phillips. I knew Eddie Phillips. He was a good cop. They wouldn't promote him because he was Jewish. I think you have to be Irish there, no? This is very uncomfortable. I really don't know what we're doing here. We're here to talk, Dad. To celebrate everything we have in common. To talk about what unites us. All right. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about all the things we have in common. You sure you don't know Sally Moskowitz? Look, I don't mean to be rude here, really, but... I don't want to sit here anymore and play 20 questions. Uh, this was worth a try, but I think the party's over. I'll get the bill. Excuse me. Katie, wait. I'd better... I really need some air. Alan, wait. He enlightens and inspires every weekday. First, Ron Henry takes you on a biblical odyssey to discover life lessons. Then Robert G. Lee hosts the only game show with a faith lift. Inspiration, please. Weekdays, starting at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Odyssey. fun to get to know baby animals. You never know what they're gonna do. Kelly liked my hair a lot more than the bottle. I think the winner of any baby animal contest would have to be Benny. He was born. I think the winner of any baby contest would have to be... <laughs> I, think the, I think the winner... <laughs> That's why your kids, and you too, will love watching Bonkers for Babies, exclusively from Time Life Kids. Jack will introduce your kids to new friends. You're about to meet North Carolina's first gorilla baby. Oh, he's kind of shy, but not for long. One of the greatest pleasures in life is watching a child do what it does best, frolic around. And there's plenty of that in Bonkers for Babies, specially priced at only $4.99. It's your first Zoo Life video, and it's not available in stores. Every Zoo Life video is packed with lots of animals and lots of fun. I'm Jack Hanna. Join me on Zoo Life to learn more about the animals of the world. Have you ever had a cuscus on your head? And if you order by credit card now, you'll get animal bloopers free. Trying to do a television show working with animals is tough. On this special edition of Zoo Life, you're going to see some of the funniest, craziest moments of my travels from around the world. Oh, gosh. But babies are everybody's favorites. So go bonkers for babies. Just call the number on your screen. There's no doubt in my mind that animals feel love. Call now. To order your Bonkers for Babies video, call 1-800-440-6996. That's 1-800-440-6996. Use your credit card and receive your animal bloopers video free. Or send $4.99 plus $3.49 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Future videos are $14.99 plus shipping and handling. This is all my fault. This was my idea. I dragged Katie into it. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> she gave it a shot, you know? What were you thinking? Here, Alan, this is for you. What is it? A dumpling. Your grandma is afraid you didn't get enough to eat. This is unbelievable. My life is falling apart and you're schlepping dumplings out to me on the street. Take it. It's good. It's already been blessed. This is just so embarrassing. I can't believe that Daddy did that. Look at my hair. Oh, what a night. What are you talking about? Your hair looks lovely. It's a beautiful color. Now, your father, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he 
loves you, that's for sure. And sometimes being a parent isn't as easy as it looks. Forget it. I tried talking to him. When Patrick gets like this, it's over. Mm. Oh, my God, is that my hair? You have beautiful hair. Are you kidding? Oh. I love that color. Now, your husband, on the other hand... <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. The world just looks different to them, I think. My mother, God rest her soul, always said to me, Rosemary, the world is divided into two kinds of people, fathers and everybody else. <laughs> How's the dinner going, Mrs. Berger? I think I guess. I had a bad feeling about this going in, but I thought you'd make it to dessert. Which one should I take? Doesn't matter. I got a deal. They're all the same. Smile, and the world smiles with you. You got robbed. Look, at least let me handle that. No, I've got it. Well, let's split it, then. I said I've got it. But you don't even want to be here. Come I've on. got it. Wait, don't fight. Look, there's no bill. No doubt. Look, um, I'm really very sorry it worked out this way. No offense. This just never should have happened, that's all. It's just Alan asked, and it seemed to mean so much to him. It's hard to say no. Tell me about it. Last time I said no to Katie was... I don't think I've ever said no to Katie. You start out saying no, you think you said no, and then there they are with a new bike. Kids, they're clever nowadays. Were we that clever when we were kids? Not in my neighborhood. What neighborhood was that? Williamsburg, South 6th Street. South 6th Street? Mm -hmm. I used to play ball with a kid from South 6th Street. <laughs> Did you know Sean O'Reilly? Yes! <laughs> Another shot? I think that'd be a good idea. Mm. That other couple, they're not. No, 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 no. They're not coming back. A priest and a rabbi are at a basketball game watching Notre Dame play. And uh, one of the guys on the Notre Dame team steps up to the foul line to take a shot. But before he shoots, he crosses himself like this. So the rabbi says to the priest, What does it mean when he crosses himself like that? And the priest says, nothing if you can't shoot foul shots. <laughs> <laughs> priest and a rabbi together, I don't know. It's just a joke, Ma. So they didn't really go together, the priest and the rabbi. Well, they did, but only in the joke. This was in Ireland, the game. No, it was in joke land. I'm really sorry I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good the way you tell that joke. I like it. You're wasting your time with this police business. You should be on the stage. That's an old Irish tradition, you know. After a big family dinner, everyone has to perform. We have an old Jewish tradition. After a big family dinner, everybody has to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of perform? Anything. A poem, a song, a story. Something everyone can share. Besame. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. Two roads diverged in yellow wood, and... <laughs> what is it? What is it? It's a giraffe. Look, here are the legs. Two roads diverge in it. Oh, and then the moon appears on the western edge of the sun and moves slowly across the sun. Oh, wah, ba, ba, loo, ba, ba, wah, ba, I have often walked down this street before, but the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. <laughs> And so, it, it was not possible for everyone in our family to be educated. And so there was a big family meeting. And the decision was made to send my older brother Samuel to school. That was a mistake. <laughs> Jules is right. Lovely boy, my brother, but in many ways not the perfect one for school. 
Did he ever learn to read? I don't remember. <laughs> loved girls, loved to dance, to drink, make up songs and poems. Sounds Irish. <laughs> Sometimes, late at night, I would take his books, sneak away. I didn't really understand them, but it was wonderful just to sit there by the fire and turn the pages. Then they closed down all the Jewish schools, and that was the end of it. What happened to Samuel? He became a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Our family were always teachers. We're back to the days of the hedgemasters. What is this? Hedgemasters? When the British began their occupation of Ireland, one of the first things they did was pass a law that no Irish children could be taught to read or write. And if any person was caught teaching, that person would be put to death. Of course, it would take a lot more than that to keep an Irishman from teaching his children how to read and write. And so schools were set up behind the high rows of hedges that grew out in the field. And it was there that the children were taught. And the history and the love for learning were passed on to the next generation. The people who did the teaching under penalty of death were called hedge masters, and they were the most honored men in the country. Next to the bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> when was this? Oh, about uh, 400 years ago. You know how to hold a grudge. That's good. Us too. Actually, Grandma, the Irish culture and Jewish culture have much in common. For instance, a long history of treasuring learning. Katie? Respect and admiration for the written word. Respect for traditions and the sense of obligation to the past and what it represents. There's one more thing. What's that? Both sides turn out beautiful children. You're watching Odyssey, television that explores. Hi, I'm Jeff Smith, the Frugal Gourmet. Join me when we cook up a feast to feed your soul here on Odyssey, keeping the feast. Today at 4 p.m. Eastern on Odyssey. Get off to a positive start every weekday. Join Kathleen Sullivan and Erie Chapman for timely information on leading a healthier, more active life. It's real stories about special people with celebrity guest appearances. Life choices for wellness. Then it's advice and support for today's busy families on Home Life. And colon counseling on COPE. Make a positive difference in your life. Weekdays starting at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Odyssey. Share an uplifting and spiritual Sunday night on Odyssey. First, Marriott Hartley explores true heroes of the heart. And Dr. Gerald Mann offers you his common sense approach to personal and spiritual growth live. Then Robert G. Lee hosts the only game show with a faith lift, Inspiration Please, followed by Mary Alice Williams sharing inspirational quiet triumphs with celebrity guests. Tomorrow, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern on Odyssey. So you've chosen to be your own boss. Running your own business means doing what you love, and doing what you do best, except one thing you don't love one bit, doing the books. Well, now you can say goodbye to your bookkeeping hassles forever, because the makers of Quicken have invented QuickBooks, the number one selling accounting software that makes it fast and easy to do the things you don't love doing, like paying bills, writing invoices, figuring out what your customers owe, even tracking inventory and doing payroll. QuickBooks makes it all hassle-free. How's this for fast information? A click, and QuickBooks shows you this quarter's income and expenses. And look, a few keystrokes, and QuickBooks does your invoicing for you, and then does the bookkeeping automatically. So you can get back to doing what you do best, growing your business. It's even easy to try QuickBooks. Call now to get a trial version absolutely free through this special limited time TV offer. That number is 1-800-641-2131.
Well, this was just a wonderful night. I can't tell you when I've had more fun. Well, me neither. It was a giraffe. How could you not know that? Who else has a neck like that? My husband, the zookeeper. <laughs> <laughs> really think it worked, huh? For now. I really like your parents. Yours, too. Really nice. Well, hopefully we'll never have to go through that again. <laughs> You shouldn't have gone to all this trouble, Mrs. Berger. Really, it wasn't necessary. Thank you. You'll enjoy it. Thank you. Good night, Kitty. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Alan. Good night, Katie. Good night, Mr. Monahan. Oh, Alan, uh, walk us home, will you? I uh, have something for your grandma. Everybody got home all right? Fine. Mr. Monaghan asked me to give you this. Oh, thank you. It was fun tonight, wasn't it? Very nice. Good night, Grandma. Good night, sweetheart. Grandma, can I ask you something? Of course, sweetheart. What is it? The Monahans are a lovely family, aren't they? Lovely people. I told them. And you know how we feel about Nick and his family. You know how much we care about them? They care very much. We love them, right? That's right. And we treat them like our own. I mean, there's really no difference. I think of Nikki as a brother, and Tony and Lucille as an uncle and an aunt. And yet, even though we're very much the same, there's this fundamental difference between these three families. We believe in one God, and they believe in another. How can that be? They're wrong.